simple harmonic motion. And there is an object experiencing simple harmonic motion. A block on a spring is a good example. So we have three goals for this session. We're going to start talking about simple harmonic motion, and that's a particular kind, a special case of oscillatory motion. We'll look at the force applied by an ideal spring when that spring is either stretched or compressed, and we'll look at the equation for the potential energy stored in a spring that is either stretched or compressed. And again, there's our picture of the block on a spring going back and forth. Okay, so by now we've, we're very good at dealing with constant forces. So springs are a little more complicated, but for a force that depends on distance, it depends on distance in a very easy way. It's a linear dependence on distance. So you look at the spring force as a function of displacement, it's a nice straight line graph. So if we measure all distances from the equilibrium length of the spring, that's where zero is on the graph, then the force is given by what we call Hooke's Law. And Hooke's Law says the force is opposite in direction to the displacement from equilibrium and proportional to it. Okay, it's proportional to x. x is the displacement from equilibrium. And k is what we call the spring constant. It's a measure of how stiff the spring is. It's got units of newtons per meter. So a very stiff spring has a very large k value. And again, the minus sign means the spring force is opposite in direction to the displacement. So what do you think the value k is for this particular graph here? And so what are we asking for? We're really asking for the slope of that line. Okay, and you can see that is 10 newtons per meter. Okay, so, well, the slope itself is in fact minus 10 newtons per meter, but the equation is f is minus kx, so the k itself is just 10 newtons per meter. Okay, so let's say we attach this spring to a block. The block is on a frictionless surface, so if we want the block to reach x is 1 meter, starting from x equals 0, how much kinetic energy do we have to give it? 5 joules, 10 joules, 20 joules? What do you think? What does it depend on? This graph can be very helpful. So what you want to think about is that the work is the area under the force versus position graph. Okay. So what we need is enough initial kinetic energy so that when we add that kinetic energy to the negative work done by the spring on the block, and the kinetic energy at x is 1 plus 1 is 0. Okay, then it'll come to rest and we'll be fine. Okay, so the magnitude of the work done is the area under the curve, but that's just a triangle. So that's 1 half the base, which is x, times the height, which is kx. So we get a work which is minus a half kx squared. Okay, so in this case the work is simply minus 5 joules, and so we need 5 joules of initial kinetic energy so the block makes it all the way to x is 1 meter. Okay, so now the block comes to rest at x is plus 1 meter. Well, what happens next? Okay, so of course what happens is that the block is only at rest for an instant. It's feeling a force in the negative direction from the spring. So when it gets to x is 1, comes to rest, it starts moving in the negative direction because it's feeling that force in the negative direction. So what is its kinetic energy when it gets back to x equals 0? Okay, well now you get all the energy back. It comes back to 5 joules. Okay, but now the velocity, of course, is in the negative direction. So the spring force is conservative. Okay, so we give it 5 joules at x equals 0. It goes out to x is 1. Somehow that energy is still in the system, but certainly not in the form of kinetic energy. And, of course, it's stored in the form of elastic potential energy in the spring itself but then the spring gives it all back to us so that therefore we can say the spring force is conservative and we can define a potential energy for the uh, for the spring okay so after it goes through x equals zero how far does it go before it stops okay so it starts at zero goes out to x is plus one stops for an instant comes back passes through zero 
goes out to x is minus 1, stops for an instant, goes back to 0, and then we're back to the beginning and it all repeats. Okay, so this is how the oscillation happens. And this will go on forever and ever as long as there are no resistive forces like friction and air resistance. Okay, so that leads us to energy. And so we can define an elastic potential energy, and it turns out to be 1 half kx squared. Okay, so if we have a block on a frictionless table attached to a spring, we let the block go from rest. What happens to the energy stored in the spring? Well, it starts out with uh, elastic potential energy, turns into kinetic energy, and oscillates back and forth between potential and kinetic. It's not like a ball rolling up and down, kind of a, a bowl. So it goes back and forth between gravitational potential energy and kinetic. This time it's elastic potential energy and kinetic. So let's say we want to know the maximum speed of the block. So we can say maximum potential is the maximum kinetic. Those happen at different times, right? Maximum kinetic where it's passed through, through equilibrium. Maximum potential where it's at rest just for an instant at the turnaround point. So then we can say 1 half kx max squared is 1 half mv max squared. And we can rearrange to get the maximum velocity is the maximum displacement, also known as the amplitude of the oscillation, times this factor of root k over m. So the stiffer the spring, the faster it's going to go. And of course, the heavier you make the block, the more massive it is, the slower it's going to go. That makes a lot of sense. And of course, those factors of a half in the equation just simply canceled out. Okay, so that is our introduction to oscillating systems, particularly the block on the spring.